Today we're breaking down the fascinating history of the Isle of Arran, often called Scotland in miniature. Welcome back to a Scottish island, a day brought to you by BagtownClans.com. I'm your host, Colin MacDonald, and today we're sailing to one of Scotland's most iconic and storied islands. Arran is the largest island in the Firth of Clyde, covering 432 square kilometres and home to breathtaking landscapes that range from rugged mountains in the north to rolling lowlands in the south. It's divided by the Highland Boundary Fault, which neatly splits the island into two distinct regions, making it a microcosm of all that Scotland has to offer. Towering above it all is Goatfell, Arran's highest peak, standing at 874 metres. Arran has been continuously inhabited since the Neolithic period and the island is rich with archaeological treasures. The Macri Moor standing stones are one of the best preserved examples of Neolithic and Bronze Age activity in Scotland. These mysterious stones, some over 12 feet tall, rise airily from the ground and it's easy to feel like you're stepping back in time when visiting this site. But beyond these ancient stones, Arran holds a number of peculiar stories and legends. One of the most famous involves King's Cave, located on the island's west coast. According to legend, Robert the Bruce took refuge in this cave in the early 1300s while he was on the run during Scotland's Wars of Independence. It was here as the story goes, that Bruce observed a spider struggling to weave its web. The spider's perseverance inspired Bruce to keep fighting, and eventually his efforts led to Scotland's victory over the English. Though the legend may sound familiar, King's Cave adds a layer of mystique, as it's also believed to have been a place of ancient worship, possibly even linked to Viking activities. Speaking of Vikings, Arran was under Norse control for centuries, and their influence is still evident in the island's place names. One of the most intriguing remnants of this era is a Viking ship burial found near King's Cross, adding another chapter to the island's long and varied history. By the 13th century, Arran had transitioned from Norse control to become part of the Kingdom of Scotland, marking the end of the Viking Age. Arran's medieval period is also tied to the Hamilton family, who took possession of Brodick Castle, one of the island's most prominent landmarks. This fortress has a long history of conflict, having been attacked by English forces and Highland raiders alike. It later became a key seat for the Dukes of Hamilton, whose influence on the island would last for centuries. Fast forward to the 19th century and you'll find that Arran was home to a number of strange and unexpected events. Take for example the story of the Baratis mine near Sanox. When mining began in 1840 it proved highly productive, but it wasn't the lack of minerals that caused the mine to close. It was the 11th Duke of Hamilton's desire to preserve the island's beauty declaring that the mine spoiled the solemn grandeur of the scene. Imagine shutting down a successful mine just to preserve the view. However, the mine was reopened briefly after World War I, only to close for good in 1938. Arran wasn't always such a peaceful place though. During the 1600s, Oliver Cromwell sent 80 soldiers to the island to defend against a possible Dutch invasion, but these soldiers got a little too comfortable with the locals, especially the women. In retaliation, the men of Arran ambushed and killed every last one of them, an act of swift and brutal justice that remains a colourful part of the island's history. Another strange tale from Aaron's past is the infamous Goatfell murder of 1889. An English tourist named Edwin Rose set out to climb Goatfell with a companion, John Watson Laurie. Only Laurie returned, claiming Rose had fallen to his death. However, Rose's body was later found with injuries that suggested foul play. Laurie was convicted of murder, though his death sentence was commuted to life in prison. This crime shocked all of Scotland, 
adding an unexpected twist to what's usually considered a peaceful hiking trail. But not all of Aaron's stories are dark. In fact, the island has one of the quietest, nudist beaches in the world. At Cleet's shore, located near the village of Lag, visitors can enjoy the island's natural beauty in the most natural way possible. It's a quirky but fitting addition to the island's array of attractions. Aran today is known for its vibrant wildlife, with red deer, otters and golden eagles calling the island home. The surrounding waters are teeming with marine life, including dolphins and even basking sharks. The island's forests are also one of the few places in Scotland where red squirrels still thrive, a species that has become increasingly rare. Tourism now drives much of Arran's economy, with visitors flocking to hike Goatfell or take on the Arran Coastal Way, a 107 km trail that circles the island. For those less inclined to rugged adventure, there's always Brodick Castle, Locranza Distillery or even a round of golf at the island's historic courses. And don't forget to stop by the Isle of Arran Brewery for a taste of local craft beer. Whether you're fascinated by ancient history, drawn to the strange tales of its past, or simply looking for a serene getaway, the Isle of Arran has something for everyone. Its rich history, legendary stories and quirky charm make it a truly unforgettable part of Scotland. That wraps up today's journey to the Isle of Arran on a Scottish island a day. Join us next time as we explore more islands steeped in lore and legend. I'm Colin MacDonald, wishing you safe travels until we meet again. Slan go foil! <laughs>